Hello, the purpose of this demonstration is to show how to get geometry from Houdini into Maya. Along the way, I'll show some cool tricks and tips, but first, let's get a pig head. I'm going to rename this object. Go inside, here is the pig head, and here's the geometry. I can click points to see my points. I'm just gonna build an array of objects on top of this pig head. I'm gonna take off the shader, go VDB, from polygons, very good. Adjust the voxel size. Now we have a better formed pig head. Let's put a VDB sphere. Now the cool thing about this node here is we can put spheres onto our geometry. We can see the spheres filling up the voxels. Now we can adjust the point count if we want more or less, but we're interested here in the minimum radius. Let's half that. And then for ISO value, let's type one. Looking good, I'm going to add a P scale value and I'm going to uncheck overlapping. I'll untick max spheres. Maybe we can do 4,000. Now the neat thing about this overlapping is if I check overlapping, you see the spheres are overlapping as their P scale value. If I uncheck overlapping, we get no overlapping spheres. And that's cool because now I can do a copy to points. Copy two points, let's do Taurus, hook these babies up, and now we have some objects. Let's add some random rotation. For the Taurus, I'm going to adjust some of the parameters. Now let's add some random rotation. I learned this neat trick, so I want to show how to add a point and have the spheres rotate toward that point. So I'm gonna add a point, add, and here I'm going at plus one, and we have a point. If I move my mouse into the center screen, I hit the enter key. Now I can get this point and I can move it around here as shown. Okay, back to zero and there's the point at the origin. So this can be my center point. Now, if I bring in an attribute wrangle, I'm gonna connect this point into the second and I'm going to move this here. Okay, I got the copy two points. Organize a little bit, hit L for layout. Okay, that's fine. Now here in my wrangle, I'm going to reference that point. But let's say we just had a center point, because we can do that as well. Now let's adjust the normal. At n equals normalize the point. Okay, let's just do center. Now all of our torses are pointing toward the center. But let's comment this out, and let's make the torses point toward our point that we had here. Okay, let's copy that. I'm going to rename this to position from add node, and I'm going to replace it here. Now I'm going to grab that point from the second input. So bring in the point, and then I'm gonna bring in the point, zero. Okay, now we're getting the value of our point. I'm viewing my copy to points, but if I click on the add, move into the screen and hit enter, I can grab my points, and now here's the point, and they all follow. Sure, that's pretty cool and all, but let's add another wrangle. Adding in another wrangle, let's add some random rotation based on the normalized value. Okay, here in my wrangle, I'm going to call this random orient, and I'm going to paste some vex here. You don't need to do this step, but this is just going to give me some random rotations. I'll click this to get my seed, and then I can just end seed random orient. So that's fine, zero look good. Okay, now what if I want to get this scene into Maya? Now from here, we can get all of this over easy using the ROP Alembic output. Using this with default settings, let's see what we get. Okay, I saved my file here on my desktop. So now I'm going to save to disk. And we'll do this in the form of animation. So you can see how to do it with animation. Still, frame is the same process, and I will just do 10 frames. Save to disk. Okay, here in Maya, I'm going to use cache, Alembic cache. Always use reference Alembic. Okay, into my folder, and I will select, hit F for frame, and here we go. Now, as I dive down into my scene hierarchy, you can see I have one object, output, OBJ, and that references this object right here. What if I want to output all of these toruses separately?
because right now you see it's one object and yes it does have the animation on it the frames I exported were 1 through 10 I'm going to add a small transform animation frame 10 frame 10 maybe I move it up a little bit now the work the workflow I like to do to test this is working is in Maya I'll click the script editor and I'll come down here and I'll copy this line because this line is the file import because I'll have to new project control N so that I can unload the Alembic come back here and click save to disk back to Maya I can paste my script and it should load for me and I did 1 through 10 you should see if I scroll now we get a moving animation so just to test the animations working now look how slow this is it's not that slow but it lags a lot especially if you have a lot of objects and the scrubbing too is not as smooth thankfully because this is copy to points we can pack and instance now if we redo this and with instancing again I will unload and then I will save to disk back to Maya and reload look now what has happened I get the object again but now in my shapes I get all these shapes and it still lags a little bit and right here you can see the file size of the output okay let's try something else uncheck pack and instance come back to the output and now under geometry tab of the Olympic output instead of deform geometry because this will export the entire geometry every frame therefore just for deforming but now if we click on transform geometry what that's going to do is it's going to instance and use transformations so let's unload that save to disk come back here and reload there was a quick load that time and now if we zoom in it plays a little faster okay now back to copy two points let's check the pack and instance this is where we're going to see something good happen notice in the geometry spreadsheet under primitives you can see that we get 1 to 1444 this is how many points are in our scene in which all of these toruses are copied onto now if we uncheck pack and instance now we get all of the points in our entire scene we get all of these points here it's a lot of points but with pack and instance now we get just the single points of each of the object and that's going to help us out down here because we've checked transform geometry okay let's save to disk come back into Maya and load again this one took a little bit to load because it's going to instance all of our objects and now we get our individual instances so now we can select each individual ones and apply shaders now in this case you see on the right the transform is in being instanced through the values here that were provided here in Houdini so we can't move them around or manipulate these objects separately but we can apply a different shader or material if we wanted okay that's all fun and cool and everything yes we can select all our different objects here now we can't manipulate them because they're connected here but also too because it's instance the animation plays really 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 fast and this is very helpful when we do instancing and look at the file size too the file size of the Olympic file is very small but now let's get into some more advanced scenarios I'm going to reset everything back to its original and keeping this in and out point for our frames 1 through 10 I'm going to reset that and here what I'm going to do is I'm going to render this out with the pack and instance next with the geometry as deformed geometry you see here we have a checkbox build hierarchy from attribute we have to do it this way so we can build a specific hierarchy for exporting out of Houdini and importing into Maya and there's many different ways we can do that and many different instances in which you would want to so let's go over them so I'll check this now what this is looking for is a path attribute that path attribute we're going to put inside our primitives right now you can see there's 1444 primitives and those correspond to these points right here 
but there's nothing here. But we're going to put a path value here, and we're going to do that using an attribute wrangle. So after the copy to points, let's add attribute wrangle. We're going to do s at path equals something, and we're going to run that over primitives. Now you see this path here, it's going to reference this path attribute, which basically means we can change this to anything we want to, but for this demonstration, we can just define it as path. And this can be any string. Now this value has to be formatted specifically for Maya. So let's create a string and we'll call it name. And I'm gonna call that instance underscore. Now when I put the value there, you see they all have an instance value of name. Now we can break these up and group them in Houdini specifically. So let's create a standard for Maya to observe. Now we can call this anything we want, but for this case, object slash. And then I'm gonna add the name value here and then add another slash name value plus shape. And now the path turns into something like this and they're all in the same group now. So now what's gonna happen if I save to disk, oh, we got an error. We have to clear this out. Okay, save to disk, wait a little bit. You see the file size went up quite a bit. In Maya now, if we reference that, now look, they're grouped very well. And inside this object, we have the instance. Now inside this group here, we can have more instances, for example, ones in certain groups. In some cases upstream, you might have a connectivity node. For example, if you're coming in and out of a simulation, you might want to break up your objects into primitives. And so we usually switch that to primitive. You see in the primitives now, we have a class, and it basically is a variable that we can use to break up our objects later on. For example, if we uncheck pack and instance, we go to a connectivity node, you can see that now the primitives are all attached to a certain class. So now we can get a class from zero to 1,444. And that might work depending if you're going in and out of a simulation. And so now let's just say we did that. We didn't have pack and instance checked, but now we're in a connectivity node. Let's move that in here. We have the attribute class, so we can easily reference that in here. For example, we can turn that into a string ITOA, and we can bring in that class value. Now you can see here, we have a path. And for each torus now, we have the value changing. For example, 246, no, 330. And that's good because it's just bringing this number over into here. Good, okay, nothing really changed in our scene, except we did have turned off pack and instance and this attribute path build from hierarchy and we're back to the default here. This is the part that's important. Okay, I'm going to reload that. Save to disk. It's going to take a little bit. Come back here into Maya and bring in now if we look at our hierarchy now. You can see in the group we have all of our instance objects now. And they're not tied to any position, scale or rotation value, but they do animate. So for example, we can move that way over here. It moves a little lag, but that's okay. We can select multiple objects and assign different shaders to them if we want to. Cool, very cool. We can take some and move them over there or take these and move them down there, but they will still have the attributes of the animation that comes from Houdini, which is good in some cases you would want to separate your objects out this way. But now let's take a look at some other cases. I'll start new and go back into Houdini. I'll turn off the points. Now in some cases, this especially applies when you're coming in and out of simulations, RBDs, vellum, what have you, and you do have certain objects that need to be separated. And to see a real example of that, let's use a group. So we have our connectivity, but we might not use this value now. Let's try and take a look. We have this connectivity, we can leave that on, but for this, I'm going to comment out and I'm gonna make a new string. So now if we check on our geometry spreadsheet, we don't have anything here. It's not connected to our class value anymore. 
but let's connect it to a different value. Now, if you're in the connectivity here and you are coming in and out of the simulation, you'll get this value here. And that is when you would want to use this, the class value here. But you can do some fancy grouping as well. Let's try that. I'll add a group. You see here, group one. And all objects are assigned to one. Now, if I check my attribute wrangle, I can reference that group value. Now let's reference that. Now to get the number one, we can do something called inprimGroup. Because we're in primitives here, we can use the inprimGroup. So let's do inprimGroup zero, and the group is called group one, and we will check if the prim num is in. Okay, now because it's a string, let's tr get the string value. Okay, now what that's going to do is that's going to move the number one from the prim group value into place. And let's do our instance underscore plus. Now in our group node, let's add a condition because right now everything is orange it means everything is in the same group. But let's just do something fancy here. We can do enable a bounding box region. Now you'll see some of them are in orange and some of them are not selected. Here, if we check our group, we can see that those in the group are selected and those not in the group are not selected. Back in the geometry spreadsheet, if we check our wrangle now, okay, I had a typo here, prim num, okay, good. Now we can see here that those names are different here. We have zero and now here we have one because that matches whether or not we're in the group or not. Now, if I click here on the Alembic, save to disk, come back here in Maya, load that. It loaded pretty quickly, but now look. Now in our object, we have two. We have those that were inside the group and those that were not. So we have that, for example, funny looking, but in case you wanted to assign different shaders, Okay, good, now we learned how to do that from different groups. So the main thing to learn here is probably a setup like this would be ideal. Uh, you can do some fancy grouping tricks here. Let me turn off the group, but you could have your own group if you wanted to, but most of us would have a setup that's a little similar to this. Primitives that were separate out into class, and then you can group them here using the path value as we did here. So you would basically have a name in which you would be getting and referencing from here uh, in your geometry spreadsheet under primitives. And then you can take that and assign it to path so that you can reference it down here and build a certain hierarchy that's available in Maya. Or if you just had a basic copy to points and you wanted a small file, you can come and just do the transform and just have a really small file with instancing, depending on your setup. Okay, great. I hope you learned something. Thank you.